this is the whip stitch. I use the whip stitch whenever I applique wool pieces onto any kind of background. This is a cotton background and you could use the same stitch on wool backgrounds. And it works great with wool applique pieces because they don't fray at all and they just really lay down nicely. So on this half of this leaf that I already appliqued, I used a wool thread. And on this side, I used two strands of embroidery floss. I did that just to show you that you can use pretty much any kind of thread that you want. You could even use heavy pearl cottons if you wanted your stitches to show especially. So on this little rectangle shape here, I'm going to show you how to do the whip stitch and I'm using a contrasting thread just so that the stitches will really show up. So you come up inside of your shape and I came up a stitch length in from this edge, this little short edge. And then I'm going to go down right next to my background piece. So you come up in the shape and you go down right next to the shape on the outside into the background. You will practice to make sure that you get your stitches somewhat even. Usually the depth of the stitch is going to be about the same length as how big the stitches are. Okay, when you get to a corner, you're going to avoid that corner. And I would just do two stitches, one going each direction around that corner there. It's pretty much impossible to do a stitch right smack dab in that corner. Okay. Now, I just kind of frayed that, and I'm going to show you how to fix that as we, when we go here a little further. Now, I've been stab stitching, which means that you lift up the thread and pull your needle through, and then you go down and pull it. You can do that when you whip stitch, or you can do a sew stitching method, which would mean that you're going to go down and back up in one motion. This is a little bit harder to do when your fabric is in a hoop like I have it. But you go down and back up. The whole reason for whip stitch, this, the things that you need to watch, is that these little upright stitches need to be a perfect T with the edge of your applique piece. So you would go down. Sometimes it helps to just kind of estimate that's where I want my stitch to go. I'm going to go down right there. And then I'm going to come up a stitch length ahead. And so that's all that the whip stitch is. It really is a very, very easy stitch. Okay, so sometimes you'll have corners where it doesn't look quite right. You can come back and trim off any little hangies that may be hanging out past that corner and that will help it to lay nice. Sometimes the corners will distort a little bit and you can trim those off. It's still much better than trying to stitch down into the corner. Okay, so you just continue to do this. You can stab stitch or you can sew stitch it and you just want your stitches to be even, spaced evenly apart and evenly away from the edge of your applique piece. Okay, I've cut out a couple of pieces of paper to show you how your stitches will go when you're stitching different shapes. Okay, so here is a heart. You are going to avoid the point and you're going to just make stitches that are perpendicular to this edge. And so you'll notice that as you go around an outside curve that these are going to be closer together than outside here. You can just do two stitches right there going into that very point 
and that's how you would do an outside curve. Okay. Here's some inside curves. So inside curves, you still want to have each stitch be perpendicular to the edge. So can you see how these are going to line up so that the stitch is perpendicular to every edge? And that will give you a really nice look as you go around your applique pieces. So on an outside curve, the inside of your stitches are going to be closer. On an inner curve that dips in, the inside area of your stitches is going to be further apart than the outside. And that's some little tips on the whip stitch.